With Stray Gods, the role-playing musical, which releases today, highly acclaimed composer Austin Wintory and the team at Summerfall Studios try to answer the question, what would an interactive musical look like? Not an interactive, narrative-based video game that has a few songs thrown in there. No, I mean a musical where the player is able to interact with and make choices regarding the music itself. Music is always interactive for the musicians, I suppose, but with this game, it's interactive for the audience as well. It seems like one of those imaginary video games that you think of in the shower and have fun picturing all the different ways the idea could play out, but would never actually attempt to make, because bringing such an idea into reality would entail so much work and so much problem solving. Well, the mad lad Austin Wintory has actually done it. How did he manage it? I was lucky enough to get a sneak peek at one of the tracks from the game, Challenging a Queen, as a way to preview how the game's interactive music works. In each song written for the game, there are multiple points where the music can continue into one of three separate sections, and at each of these crossroads, the player is given the choice of how to proceed. Much like dialogue options in a conversation-heavy RPG, you'll use three main types of responses throughout the game the clever approach, tied to the color blue, the charming approach, tied to the color green, and the kick-ass approach, tied to the color red. Each song starts with a section that sets the scene before giving you your first choice of how to react. In Challenging a Queen, we're first introduced to Persephone, the queen of the underworld, who tries to intimidate the main character, Grace, into leaving her undead bar. Musically, we charge into the key of E minor, but get a handful of B-flat notes sprinkled around as disturbing decoration, the dissonant flat fifth of the key adding a threatening angle to the dark minor sound. A lost little girl, you shouldn't have come here, and I sure ain't in the mood to make new friends. Go home, little girl. The shadows draw near And you all alone We both know how this ends Let's see how far she bends We all know how this ends These jarring chromatic leaps from E minor to G minor to B flat minor and back have us cowering in fear But now the player has a chance to respond Depending on what color option you picked, the music transitions into one of three diverging sections. If you picked the blue path, characterized by cleverness, Grace tries to appeal to the crowd with this new melody in the key of E flat major. Let's see how far she bends, we all know how this ends. Guess I'm this evening's sacrifice But I'll see what I can do You deserve a good show Big hand for your You'll notice immediately how big of a shift we feel moving from Persephone to Grace. The shift in key from minor to major lightens up the music. The floatier triplet rhythms contrast the more intense 16th note syncopations before it, and the introduction of the bass clarinet, possibly the cleverest of all the instruments, gives Grace a very distinct musical identity from her opposition. But wait, what would have happened if we had picked the green path? The green path, Grace's charming approach, evokes a more gentle tone by introducing the harp as the main accompanying instrument. The color of the harp gives the music a calmer atmosphere, and the musical content is completely different from what we heard in the blue path. Let's see how far she bends, we all know how this ends. We've moved to the key of D minor, another key shift that keeps Grace's music feeling distinct from Persephone's, but we're still in a minor key and the rhythm of the bass line and melody stays pretty consistent with Persephone's opening. Compared to the contrast of the blue clever path, this one feels like we're not trying to deflect Persephone's attack so much as trying to play her game. Now, what happens if we chose the red path? 
This is the aggressive path, and here we see Grace go on a full-on attack and start rapping. Electric bass stomps in with heavier percussion, immediately bringing a more aggressive edge to the music. Let's see how far she bends, we all know how this ends. Clearly, the three options in question aren't minor aesthetic deviations from a main path. We're getting three completely different songs based on our choice here. Now, besides getting to react to the music how we see fit, each piece is written with an opposing character who reacts back at your choices. For instance, taking a clever approach gets a playful response, ending with Persephone warning Grace, maybe you don't know who I am. My, my, we caught a butterfly, such a delicate thing. What a find, I hope she doesn't mind when we pull off her wing. Our charming approach from Grace prompts Persephone to sing a totally different section in response, lamenting how often she sees wannabe heroes bust into the underworld looking for answers. She's seen it a thousand times before. something new to the door and you've heard it a thousand times before honey i've heard it a thousand times before honey the aggressive approach sees persephone respond by continuing the section of music that opened the piece threatening grace by assuring her that we all know how this ends want to do this in private you're lost little girl Wasting our time now The gall of a squeaking mouse In a lion's den Give up, little girl The bus home is leaving Seen it so many times We all know how this ends Sometimes your choices have implications that reach out farther into the song than you would think. Certain sections will continue one of three ways based on which of the three attributes you've used leading up to that point in the piece. This section of Challenging a Queen is a red choice, but depending on which color you had picked earlier in the song, it plays out slightly differently. If you had opened with an aggressive move, then you'd see Grace continue her aggressive rapping, interjecting Persephone's condemnations with sarcastic jabs. The baritone sax comes in swinging underneath with a blues scale based bass line, outlining a 1 to flat 6 to flat 7 to 1 chord progression. You're spitting at the queen of the dead. You're not my queen, P. I'm alive. You got a real live muse in this basement dive. You could use a boost. Should I play a gig? Hey, what a mouth works, P. It'll be big. Get lost, little girl. I need a room. This is the same progression and melody used in Persephone's response to Grace's first choice of the song, if the player picked the red path. This very same section looks very different if the player chose the green path at the beginning, however. Instead of Barry Sachs, we're treated to 16th note string figures decorating Persephone's response using a very different 1 to flat 3 to flat 2 to flat 6 progression and the melody taken from the section you would have encountered in your earlier green choice, leading to the thousand times before hook. You're not my queen pea, I'm alive. You got a real life muse in this basement dive. You could use a boost. Should I play a gig? Hey, word of mouth works, pea. It'll be They big. get dumber every I'm year. Afraid.
Thanks to your choice down the red path for this specific juncture, you get to see Grace go on the attack, dropping bars to interrupt Persephone's melody. But what Persephone's melody happens to be, and the arrangement of the piece to go along with it, depends on which path you took to get to this point. The music was all meticulously crafted and arranged within this system to maintain fluidity, even while allowing interactivity. No matter how much you jump between different colored tactics throughout a song, the piece will manage to maintain a consistent through line of musical ideas that develop into a big finish. And, as we've seen already, these choices don't lead to subtle variations on a theme. We're talking about multiple songs worth of music written for each individual track. For each chorus you hear, there are at least two equally strong choruses that you didn't, hiding away waiting for you to take another playthrough. And the more choices you make, the more branching paths there are, splitting off from each option into a sprawling web of music. Just looking at this chart of branching paths makes my brain hurt. I can't imagine the amount of time, care, and superhuman logistical and organizational skills required to make this thing a reality. As the song veers farther and farther into whichever direction you choose to push it, you can find yourself ending in very different places based on your trajectory. The aggressive approach might culminate in you dominating the queen of the underworld, defeating her in front of her own crowd, and taking her place musically by having Grace sing Persephone's opening section of music. The clever approach might end up with you winning over the crowd, having them add their voices to yours in a choir that can overpower Persephone. Or, in my personal favorite, the charming approach can even build up to Grace connecting with Persephone, letting her win the musical battle in order to get her to come over to Grace's side. You overcame so much on your own. You should be praised. I'm done throwing stones. Please believe me. Do you see me bowing down to you, my queen? Underworld, I hereby concede You wanted blood, well, there's no more to bleed Your queen's above that Now I get that But can you help Persephone? Help a lost little girl The way the track breaks down to this delicate voice and harp duet, at a much slower tempo than where the track started, perfectly captures how Grace has defeated Persephone here. Not by overpowering her, but rather by taking the wind out of her sails and de-escalating the conflict. The way the music here comes in with an E major chord rather than the opening key of E minor, but still incorporates notes and chords from E minor to create this bittersweet sound is so perfect. It's a quiet victory for Grace here. And then the way the music chromatically descends from G to F sharp to F major 7 creates a sense of slowly sinking toward our final resolution. This final cadence, a twist on a 1-5-1, one, one, sees the entrance of a C sharp note over the final E minor over B and B chords, making them an E minor 6 over B and B sus 2. This is an ear-catching and unique twist on the classic 1 over the 5th to 5 to 1 cadence, which concludes by ending on a root and 5th, the tonic E minor chord, without the 3rd. Ending a minor key piece on a power chord like this, especially after all of that harmonic color that led up to this final note, is a really powerful move. This is the kind of subdued yet emotional writing that Austin Wintory always excels at. Without the context of the piece leading up to these endings, it's hard to believe that they're all versions of the same song. And besides these, I'm told there are 14 other endings possible for this song alone, depending on how you navigate through the different branching paths. 
I am just super impressed with what Austin Wintry and his team have accomplished with this title, and it is so cool to see how artistry and logistics have collided to make this idea a reality. Big thanks to Austin for giving me a behind the scenes look at how this stuff works. If this seemed at all up your alley, you should go buy the game right now. You can find me on Patreon if you want to support this channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.